Get me all down, great Jehovah, pure from to this barren land. Even though of racial intolerance, killing, police brutality, protest, looting, dear Heavenly Father, we know that you see all, you hear all, and we just want to give you the praise and glory. Just ask you to forgive us for all of our trespasses, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the Masonic Order, for the sisters and the brothers, for everything that they do, and they're trying to be the light for this community, dear Heavenly Father. But we know without you, there is no us, dear Heavenly Father. We just want to just just hold on to your unchanging hand and we want you not to lead us not into temptation but we know that yea though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death we know we shall fear no evil because thou art with us dear heavenly father we just want to just get you to bless the sick and shut in bless those who are not able to walk out and come out into society right now because of the virus dear heavenly father but we know you will defeat all and you said if you just had the faith of a mustard seed, that everything would be all right, dear Heavenly Father. We just want to just give you the praise and the glory. We just want to just tell you, thank you. Thank you for our shelter. Thank you for jobs that we have. Thank you for the health that we have. Just thank you for everything. Just being able to think, 
being able to walk, being able to talk to Heavenly Father. We just want to just give you thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. of the enemy. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise you, O oh God, my God. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my gratitude. to you, Psalms 43. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and doing of his word. I've been tasked with introducing the master of ceremony, which is the easy one. Uh, he's a member of Starlight Baptist Church in Satsuma, Alabama. Uh, he's the current assistant district deputy of District 1. Uh, he's the Worshipful Master of Plateau Lodge number 115. This guy has been a uh, mentor to me since I moved back to Mobile. He uh, helped anybody out that's in need. Uh, he cut your grass in the suit if that's what he had to do. Anything you need, you can call on this guy to do it. Uh, without further ado, I introduce you, present to some, introduce to others, Brother Joe Bear Jr. First, giving honor to God who is the head of my life, uh, to the pastor who will be bringing the word to us on this evening, Pastor Robinson. Uh, to our Grand District Deputy, Brother Llewellyn Spencer, the other Grand Lodge officers, to our Worship Master, Past Masters, officers, and all of my brothers of the crowd, to our Grand Worthy Matron, Sister Shirley Pratt, our Grand District Deputy, Sister Ruthetta Sullivan, to the Worthy Matrons and to the Worthy Patrons, to all the officers and sisters of the order and to all who's under the sound of my weak voice. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to be here with you today to help celebrate uh, our annual St. John's Day. Uh, I'm happy to, uh, and honored to be able to serve as your master of ceremony. Surely I want to take the time and thank Brother Gregory Williams for the warm words of introduction. And though that we're not able to fellowship one with the other uh, during this time, uh, we do want to remind you and encourage you that God is still on the throne. He sits high and he looks low. He's too old to do wrong. And he's too wise to make a mistake. Uh, we have an excellent program that is lined up for you on this evening. And we're going to jump right on into it. Uh, we're going to uh, start off with a welcome from Brother uh, Philip Drawder. Then we will have a solo by Brother Patrick McConaughey. Uh, and then we'll be back. Sisters, brothers, family, friends, and those of you who may be visiting with us today, good afternoon. 
My name is Brother Philip Drauder, and I am here to welcome you to District Number 1's St. John's Day 2020. We hope you enjoy our production, and we look forward to seeing you again in person. been set by the previous speakers, uh, I would like to uh, bring greetings to you from Pine Grove Lodge 639, Daphne, Alabama. And I have been tasked today with giving the occasion. And what a joyous occasion, because St. John Day has been celebrated for hundreds of years down through the ages. So I thought about this long and hard, and I didn't want to uh, do something so deep that the new brothers that come in, the new brothers that come in didn't want to understand it. You know, I wanted to make it simple enough that they understand why, why are we doing St. John's Day? Where they came from? Why are we incorporated into Mason? So what I had to do was break it, break it in two. Let's talk about St. John's Day and the, the patron saints first. Where did they come from? How did we get incorporated? But during the time of the Roman Catholic Church, when they were the authority over the churches, uh, there was a lot of pagan holidays out there. You know, where they worship their winter soldiers and summer soldiers, and they did things that didn't have nothing to do with Christianity. So the patron saints, St. John the Baptist and St. John the Evangelist, they were already patron saints in the Roman Catholic Church. So as time went on, they kind of traded these things out for those pagan holidays introduce uh, the, the patron saints into uh, their celebrations. So uh, at this time, the lodges uh, that was known as Masonic lodges, King Solomon was the patron of the, of the lodges back in the day, before consolidation. After consolidation of the England lodges, they chose St. John the Baptist and St. John the Evangelist to be their patron saints. So all the lodges here in the United States and abroad, they are sanctioned 
and by the St. John's. During the time of Prince Hall, when he first established Prince Hall Masonry in America, the only two things that they could do masonically was to bury uh, their dead brothers uh, masonically and celebrate St. John's Day. So that is kind of how it got into Prince Hall, the way that we celebrate it today. Now let's talk about the two patron saints for a minute. St. John the Baptist and St. John the Evangelist, uh, they play very important parts in the Bible. You know, St. John the Baptist was spoken about all the way back in Isaiah. You know, and, and we know Isaiah was the only prophet that didn't die, that God took him up straight up to heaven in a chariot. So when St. John the Baptist was out in the wilderness calling people to repent that the Messiah was coming, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they always asked him, who are you? Are you that Isaiah that they was talking about that was going to come before the Messiah? And he didn't answer them. He didn't say if that was him or not. He just said, I am the voice calling out in the wilderness. You know, make straight your way. You know, repent of your sins. And so he was about his job. The thing that John the Baptist was called to do as a prophet, he handled his business. He did what God told him to do. He turned his back on the world. He, he brought himself up in the, in the wilderness. He said he was waxed strong because he made his own clothes and he ate a wild honey and lived in the, in the, in the wilderness. So I want to try to coincide that with what's going on today. We know we have a pandemic going on out there. We know we got an economic downturn. We know we just got lawlessness everywhere. And so we, we need a, a pattern. We need someone to model our lives after. So there's a saying in our ritual, from whence you come and what did you come here to do? And the answer to that is, we came from the lodge of the Holy St. John's at Jerusalem. And we came here to improve ourselves in masonry and to do our passions. So in any regular and well-governed lodge, there's a circle. And, and on that circle, there's two parallel lines. One of those lines represent John the Baptist, and one of those lines represent John the Evangelist. The vortex of that circle sits the Holy Scripture. And what, it, what this teaches us is that we should have to circumscribe our life with the laws that God has laid down in this book. And we have to look at these two examples that we have chosen as our patron saints. And then we look at them and what they did for religion, for the society, we can easily get out of this pandemic that we're in. You know, if you think we're not in a pandemic, if you think that the economic picture is not grim, this, what's going on now, do to we do get one. You know, but I would like to say this. Brothers, circumscribe your circle. Be true in what you say or you're taking the oath to be. And so this occasion is for us to look back at someone who did all of that without all the tools that we had today. John the Baptist did all of this. And Jesus even honored him when he said, there's not one better than John the Baptist. So that is the example for us. So in this occasion today, let's look back on the people that done paved the way for us, done did what they're supposed to have done, and brought us to this day. Good afternoon to all of the grand officers, to all of my brothers in the craft and my sisters in the order. I bring you greetings as Associate Matron from the Order of Eastern Star, Sunshine Chapter number 50. Good afternoon. Before I begin my task, I would just like to say when I was thinking about a song to sing for this event, I was thinking about the changing times and what's going on in the world. So I do pray and hope that this song will touch you and during these hard times, I pray that the words will touch your heart and your soul and always know that God is always in control. I don't worry about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine for its skies may turn to gray I don't know about my future for 
Jesus said, and today he walks beside me, for he knows what lies ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I, I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand, many things about I just don't seem to understand, but I, I know who holds tomorrow, and I Now we know that why we're here and what we're celebrating today. Uh, we want to thank uh, Brother Bullock for that uh, occasion. Uh, and then we want to thank uh, Sister Stephanie Lucas for another beautiful solo. Uh, at this time, we will have uh, greetings and announcements coming from our uh, Grand District deputies who will also do their roll call. Uh, Brother Llewellyn Spencer, uh, our Grand Bushel Grand District deputy for uh, Masonic District Number 1 and Sister Rudetta Sullivan, our Grand District Deputy uh, for District Number One. Uh, they will come this time. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming and participating with our virtual St. John's Day. I am Llewellyn Spencer, Grand District Deputy of District Number One. I am here to introduce to you our largest in District One. We have Olive Branch number one, Worship Master David Jones. We have St. John number two, Worship Master Joe Franklin. Hiram number three, Worship Master Leroy Evans. Gulf City number 14, Worship Master Wesley Montgomery. Plateau number 115, Worship Master Joe Barron. Progressive number 318, Worship Master Sam Collins, Frank Daffin, number 302, Worship Master Rico Russell, Cedar Grove, number 638, Myron Stallworth is the Worship Master, Cedar Grove 722, Cliff Barron is the Worship Master, Millery, number 777, Joshua McConaughey is the Worship Master, Pine Grove, number 639, Joseph Bullard, he is the worship master there. St. Stephen's, number 846. Joey Bastida is the worship master. Douglasville, number 945. Kenneth Washington is the worship master. I would like to recognize our Grand Lodge officers from this district. Right Worshipful John Manning, Grand Junior Stewart. Right Worshipful Asa Hale, Grand Senior Deacon. Grand Associate Patron, Wilbur Webb. Right Worshipful, Maurice Edwards, Grand Junior Warden. To the Master of Ceremonies, to the Lodge of the Day, to my counterparts, my sisters and brothers, Governor Grand Working Maker, Sister Shirley Pratt, to our Grand Associate Patron, Brother Wilbur Webb, to our brothers of the craft and our sisters of the order, it is good to be here today. My duty is of like one, that is to introduce you to our sisters and brothers and the chapters of Misfoot Grand Chapter, Order of the Eastern Star. 
The Lord is my life and my peace of my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the light and my strength. Of whom shall I be afraid? During this pandemic, there has been a lot of fear that will become a lot of us. But we must remember to stay calm and not be afraid, for this too shall pass. Our roster of chapters for today from District 1, which consists of Baldwin, Mobile, and Washington County. We will start with Lydia chapter number 33, for Sister Lydia Horn is the worthy matron, and Brother Luella Spencer is our word patron. White Lily chapter number 34, Sister Sonia R. Kennedy is the word the matron. Brother LeBaron Fry is the word the patron. Sunshine chapter number 50, Sister Sabrina E. Horn is the word the matron. Brother Darius Well, word the patron. Eleanor chapter number 62, Sister Dorothy Hopkins is the word the matron. Brother Frank Robinson is the word the patron. At Celsa number 63, Sister Mabel King is the word of matron. Eunice, chapter number 142, Sister Georgia O'Kane is the word of matron. Brother Ulysses Reed is the word of matron. Venus, chapter number 185, Sister Johnny Gilchrist, word of matron. Daphne Pride, number 387, Sister Dorothy Wiggins, word of matron. Brother Anthony Pierce, word of patron. Unita Starr, number 432. Sister Mary Evans is the word of matron. Brother Leroy Evans is the word of patron. Maureen Starr, number 463. Sister Sarah McConaughey is the word of matron. Brother Jesse McConaughey is the word of patron. Juliet, chapter number 613. Sister Lydia Williams, word of matron. Brother Julian Wood is the word of patron. Rosa Sherrod, number 617. Sister Annie Schutz, word of matron. Brother Johnny Eichner, word of patron. Jordan Pride, number 775. Sister Erling Douglas, word of matron. Brother Donna McGee, the word of patron. Marie B. Dixon, chapter number 875. Where Sister San Francine Craig is the worthy matron, and Brother Maurice A. Hope served as the worthy patron. Good evening to each of you, and I hope that this will be a most enjoyable afternoon. Thank you. I would be remiss if I did not recognize our worship master of the day, posthumously, Ray Sanders. Please take a moment with me as we say a silent prayer for him his family and his craft. Thank you. Now that we know that who's who now, this time we're going to ask, because we are honored and fortunate enough to have with us uh, our grand worthy matron, uh, who is a part of this district. Uh, we're going to ask if she will come and bring us greetings uh, from the Mr. Grand Chapter. It is our very own, our grand worthy matron, Sister Shirley Pray. After that, uh, we will have a musical solo by Brother Robert Lewis from Plateau Lodge number 115. Then we will have the introduction of our speaker by our worship master, David Jones. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Good afternoon to all of our grand officers, to our brothers of the craft, our sisters of the order, to all of our visiting friends and members. I bring you greetings on behalf of Ms. McGrath Chapter, Order of Eastern Star, Jurisdiction of Alabama, Prince Hall Affiliated, where I am currently serving as your Grand 
worthy maker. I count it a blessing to be here today in a world of uncertainty and unrest. We're blessed just to be on this side of the grave. And before I go any further, I'd like to extend sincere condolences to the many families that have lost loved ones during this pandemic, especially to Brother John Manuel, who lost his wife, and to our grand chaplain, Brother Ray Sanders, who passed away and is so dearly missed. We also express sincere condolences to the George Floyd family and to all of the other families who died such sinless deaths. My brothers and sisters, we're all praying for change. And you know, change has to begin with me with you, with the spiritual leaders, and ultimately the entire nation. For the Bible tells us in Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change has to come with the mindset. And then once you change your mind to start thinking positive things, that's when positive change will come. Another scripture tells us in Psalms 51 and 10, Create in me, O Lord, a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me. When we begin to think the right things in our minds and start doing the right things from our heart, then we will see changes come about. I can tell you and show you your faults. I am not supporting the rioting, the looting, the stealing, the fires burning, that's not the way to do it. For the Bible tells us that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If we won't change, my brothers and sisters, that's not the way to do it. We all can support positive protests. It's okay to let our voices be heard but we can do it in a manner where it does not destroy our nation. We must stop throwing around the name of Jesus without backing it up with love and positive actions. So many of us want to be righteous in word, but not in deed. And as I close today, please take heed to these positive words. Hate has four letters. So does love. Enemies has seven letters. So does friends. Lying has five letters. So does truth. Negative has eight letters, so does positive. Under has five letters, so does above. Cry has only three letters, but so does joy. Anger has five letters, so does wrong. Hurt has four letters, so does he. It means life is like a double-edged sword. It takes the same amount of energy to do wrong as it does to do right. So why don't we focus 
on all positive things and forget about the negative things. When we do the right things, our minds are clear. Our hearts are light. So let us focus on doing the right thing. And I just feel in my spirit, and I declare and decree today that change is coming. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God continue to bless Prince Hall, Miss the Grand Chapter, and ultimately the great nation that we live in. Thank you.
by the union together by the union of Frank Franklin and Lily Robinson, his devoted husband and a good father to his six children. I do like about Pastor Robinson. He's the type of pastor, or the type of man, if you need help, he's always there for you. He always there if you need to talk to him. You always have a listening ear. He is currently the pastor of Brighter Pine Grove AME Church in Mobile, Alabama. The next voice that you will be hearing will be Pastor Franklin D. Robinson Jr. of Greater Pine Grove AME Church. First. <laughs> celebrating this St. John's Day, a wonderful day, a biblical day, a day of love and unity. And I'm so glad to be here. I, I really thank the, the brethren and I, I thank an individual that I have been told by people that they call him Big Lou. And they call him Big Lou because he's a big man. And I wanna thank him for giving me this opportunity to stand and to speak a few words of encouragement to you today. Let, let, let us pray, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for life, health, and strength. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the many blessings thou have bestowed upon us. And Lord, as I stand behind this desk that has been sanctified and set forth as a sacred desk, Lord, I ask you to give me a word for thy people, a word that just maybe some soul might be saved. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. 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 Turn with me, if you will, to the New Testament book of St. Matthew. Matthew, the sixth chapter. I will be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And in Matthew, the sixth chapter, beginning at the first verse, it says, Take heed that ye do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, 
when thou doest thine arms, do not sound as the trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets. And they that have glory of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Let thine arms be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward openly to all people. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you that they have their reward. And for a subject on this grand occasion today, what time is it? It's praying time. What time is it? It's praying time. We, we remember as, as children growing up, you were given certain prayers that you had to say at certain times of the day. And we, we took those prayers just to be something to do, something to say. But the people who instructed us and taught us and raised us, they took those prayers to be sacred. A prayer just as simple as, as now I lay me down to sleep, was a very serious, serious. And, and if you think about it, you're praying to the Lord and asking him and thanking him for what has taken place during that day. And then you're laying down, hoping and praying that you get the opportunity to wake up one more time. They were serious about those prayers. When you sit down to, to eat your lunch or to eat your supper, you were told to pray. And, and for some reason, we've gotten to the point these days that we don't pray about anything. We jump up, get out the bed, go on and do what we got to do and get on the road. And then when something happens, the first thing that you do, you holler out, Lord, have mercy on me. What you need to do is pray beforehand. And then in the midst of praying, what we need to realize and understand is you need to wait for an answer. Meditate just a little while in the midst of your praying. Not praying so everybody can hear you. Not praying so a whole lot of folks will give you credit of how good you pray. But just pray as simple as you can. Lord, I need you. Lord, I have to have you. Lord, I thank you for one more opportunity watching over me as I slumbered and slept last night. Lord, I thank you for touching me with a thing of love, waking me up this morning, starting me on my way. Lord, I thank you for the roof over my head. Lord, I thank you for the food that I have on my table. Lord, I thank if we were to just thank the Lord for all the many blessings that he has bestowed upon us, we wouldn't have time to ask for anything. He already know what you want, but if you pray and pray sincerely, you can ask the question, what time is it? It's praying time. It's praying time. Some folks seek recognition. Some folks seek to be, and some of y'all, I know the brethren and the sisters here today, you, you, you don't go to a church to where uh, the fellow praying wants to put on a contest to see can he pray, uh, I'll pray the fellow that prayed before him, or uh, the person that's reading the scripture wants to read a little better than the person that read before them, trying to make a contest about doing the work of the Lord, when all you got to do is just be unmovable, steadfast, holding fast in your heart, doing the work of the Lord, and he will be happy with what you're doing. It's praying time. We're in the midst of a situation that no one have had to deal with globally. All over this country, all over this land, all over this world, folks have made up in their mind that uh, it's praying time. Folks that ain't never thought about praying, they praying right now. It's praying time. But what about before then? What were you doing before then? Concentrate on where you want to be in life and realize the only way you can go is through Jesus Christ. It's praying time. It's time for us to come together as brothers. We all want to walk 
and march and talk about Black Lives Matter. Yes, they do. But we need to get to the point as brothers of this country to realize that black lives need to start being meant something to black lives. We act like we don't care about black lives. Might not ask me to speak again, but I'm gonna tell it like it is right now. Black lives need to matter to black people. We're getting to the point where we're killing each other on an alarming rate. But the minute that someone outside of our race does something to us, then and only then do we want to protest. Let's start protesting when the brothers are killing each other in the street. Let's start protesting when the sisters are fighting on every corner. What time is it? It's praying time. It's praying time. It's praying time. Jesus told his disciples how to pray. No need for praying to get somebody to pat you on the back. Oh, you sure enough prayed a prayer today. Who benefited from it? Did anybody get anything from it? Did you get anything from the prayer that you just prayed? It's praying time. It's time for us to come together like we've never come together before. That was the individual who wrote a song a few years ago while traveling in New Orleans after the Hurricane Katrina. And he simply said in the song, I I'll pray for you and you pray for me and watch God change things. If, 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 if I pray for you and you pray for me and then you pray for him and he pray for you and then you pray for her and she prays for you and she prays for the next person, Watch God change things. If we decide to pray and pray the way that we know to pray, everything is going to eventually be all right. Trouble comes on every hand. God did not say for one moment that you were going to just simply go through things on a flowery bed to be. He said man born of woman is of a few days, and those days are full of trouble. It's praying time. It's praying when you're sick and the doctor has given you some bad news and the medicine that he gave you just ain't working. It's praying time. When your children have went contrary and they turned against everything you, God, and everybody else, it's praying time. If you decide and live the life that you need to live, knowing that Jesus is the only person we need to be calling on right now. His name is Jesus. The one and only. His name is Jesus. The great I am. It's praying time. Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. It's praying time. It's time to call on him and just tell him, thank you, Lord, for one more day. Thank you, Lord, for one more opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for just being God all by yourself. It's praying time. Call on Jesus. Call him in the morning. Call him in the evening. Call him late at night. Church of a living God. It's praying time. What time is it? It's praying time. Thank you, Father. Thank you for right now. I thank you for letting me be in the midst of some good brothers. Everybody out there is not a criminal. Some of us love the Lord in a mighty way. Thank you, Lord, for food on my table. Thank you, Lord, for clothes on my back. Thank you, Lord, for shoes on my feet. Thank you, Lord. For just this day, what time is it? It's praying time. Uh, at this time, I would like to thank everyone who uh, was able to participate on the program and all that you have done uh, to help make this program uh, what it was. Uh, I surely want to thank our Grand District Deputy, Brother Spencer, for uh, the invitation to uh, host this program. And then we want to thank uh, the brothers, uh, Brother Draw and Brother Anderson, for taking the time out. Uh, their busy, busy schedules to come and uh, produce this program. Uh, again, this program would not have been what it was if it weren't for you. So from the bottom of my heart, uh, we surely want to say thank you, God bless you, and God keep you as our prayer. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. And Lord, as we leave this holy place, I ask you to Forever be a fence of protection around us, guiding and holding us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart.
be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the church all said, Amen.